Welcome to the castle everyone. This is Nightsaber Z42 and this is Character Vault, a series where I go through the entire character creation process from start to finish in various RPG systems. And today we're going to be taking a look at Star Wars Force and Destiny. Now if you have Edge of the Empire or the Age of Rebellion game, this process is going to be very similar. There's just a couple little differences but I do have videos for the Edge of the Empire and Age of Rebellion, so check out those videos if you want something a little bit more specific. There's also going to be a couple of things that you're going to need for this process. The first and most important is the character sheet. And if you go to swrpgcommunity.com, there are all sorts of character sheets to use in all of the games. Edge of the Empire, Age of Rebellion, and Force and Destiny. Some of them are fan-made and they kind of condense the information down a little bit, but they also have the official character sheets, which I'll be using in this video. They also have form-fillable sheets if that's more of your thing, so definitely check out swrpgcommunity.com. Without further ado, let's go ahead and open the book and get to the character creation chapter. Character creation starts on page 41, and this chapter is just going to detail all of the different steps that go into creating a character. First thing is to determine a background, and for this video, I'm actually going to skip this step. I like to set my characteristics and my skills and all of that first, and then determine what exactly this character has come from. The next step will be to determine our morality, and then we'll select a species. We'll select the career and specialization pretty much at the same time. Then we'll get to the most complicated part, and that's to invest in the experience points. Then we'll determine derived attributes. We'll determine motivation. And then we'll get to choose our gear and our appearance. And last, we'll have to determine our group resource. And this is usually done with other players. But since I am by myself, I'm going to go ahead and pick one for my character. Morality is going to be something that is exclusive to the Force and Destiny game. In Age of Rebellion we had duty, and in Edge of the Empire we have obligation. Since we're going to be playing a Force user, we have to think about morality, good and evil in that sense. And so, there's a couple of things that we need to know first off the bat. First, our morality is at 50, and that's kind of fixed unless we choose an option, which is listed down here on page 49. We can increase or decrease our PC starting morality by 21. And so there's actually two different thresholds. At 71 or above, our character is considered a, well, a paragon, a good Jedi. But at 29 or below, they are considered a Sith. And there are pros and cons with each of those, but we'll get into that when we actually look at the core rulebook as a whole. For the purposes of this character, I'm not going to worry too much about that. But there are a couple other options as well that don't really affect our morality. First, we can gain 10 starting XP. This XP increases the starting XP the PCs gain when the player selects a species, and it can be spent to increase skills or characteristics, purchase talents, or obtain new specializations or force powers. We'll get into that in a moment, but I am going to choose this. I'm thinking ahead already, and the 10 extra XP is going to be beneficial for this character. As an alternative, you can gain 2,500 starting credits. This money may be spent on the PC starting gear or saved to be spent during gameplay. You can also choose another option which gives you 5 extra XP and 1000 starting credits, but we're not really going to make use of that. I'd rather just have the 10 starting XP. In addition to our morality, we get an emotional strength and an emotional weakness. These are things that tie our character to their morality. Our GM can use this to have a little bit of sway over our character, temptation, little bits of narrative temptation, for example. If you plan on rolling for anything in this book, you're going to need a D100, either the tenth side or the actual two dice that make up the D100. And I did do all of my rolling off camera. And for my emotional strength and my emotional weakness, I actually rolled on love and jealousy. So I actually rolled a 10. So the character has an open heart, 
While he may hold a special place in his heart for his companions or a significant other, he tends to genuinely like most individuals he meets. His love for others can make him charming and affable and exceedingly tolerant. And the flip side of that is jealousy. Love, if not given selflessly, can quickly turn to jealousy. The character's personality tends towards envy if his love is not reciprocated, or sometimes he simply envies others' accomplishments or possessions. Now, the emotional strength and emotional weakness tend to go together. Although you can roll separately for each one of those, I really wouldn't recommend it because you might get some weird combinations. But that's our emotional strength and our emotional weakness. The Force and Destiny Core rulebook has eight species to choose from. We have the Syrian, Human, Keldor, and the Mirialans. We also have the Nautilin, Togruta, Twi'lek, and Zabrak. For this video, I'm actually going to choose a Togruta. So choosing a species gives you a few different things. First and most importantly are your starting characteristics. A Togruta has a brawn of one, an agility of two, an intellect of two, a cunning of three, a willpower of two, and a presence of two. In addition, their wound threshold is 10 plus their brawn score. Your strain threshold is 10 plus their willpower score. And for starting experience, they get 100 XP to use. They also have two special abilities. First, Togrutas begin the game with one rank in Perception, but they may not train Perception above rank 2 during character creation. In fact, you cannot train any skill above rank 2 during this process. In addition to that, we also get Pack Instincts. When performing the Assist Maneuver, Togrutas grant two boost dice instead of one. Force and Destiny has six different careers to choose from, but each career has three different specializations. These specializations are really talent trees for your character to get different abilities or ways of playing. The different careers and their specializations include the Consular, which has access to the Healer, Niman Disciple, and Sage talent trees, the Guardian, which has access to Peacekeeper, Protector, and the Suresu Defender talent trees. The Mystic, which has access to the Advisor, Makashi Duelist, and Seer talent trees. The Seeker, which has access to the Ataru Striker, the Hunter, and the Pathfinder talent trees. The Sentinel, which has access to the Artisan, the Shadow, and the Sheen Expert talent trees. And then the Warrior career, which has access to the Aggressor, the Shicho Knight and the Starfighter Ace talent trees. For this video, I'll be choosing the Guardian as my starting career. Now, with each career that you choose, you actually get some career skills. These are skills that your character is supposedly good at, but most importantly, when you rank up these skills, they don't cost extra XP. If you try to rank up a skill that isn't a career skill, then it will cost a little bit more. The career skills that we have for the Guardian include Brawl, Cool, Disciple, Melee, Resilience, and Vigilance. We actually get to choose four of those to gain one free point. I've chosen Discipline, Melee, Resilience, and Vigilance to get that free point. It should be worth stating that all of the careers in this Force and Destiny Core rulebook start with a Force rating of 1. To go alongside the Guardian career, I'm actually going to choose the Suresu Defender as my specialization. And they have some additional career skills as well, such as Discipline, Knowledge Lore, Lightsaber, and Vigilance. We actually get to choose two of those to gain a free point in, and I am choosing Lightsaber and Vigilance. So now my Vigilance is at rank two. Next, we get to invest our experience points. Now, the Togruta starts with 100 XP, but I've already opted to go for an additional 10 XP because of my morality choice. We may spend experience to increase our characteristics. Character creation is the only time players can increase characteristics with experience points. So my recommendation is to prioritize any characteristics that you want to increase at this phase of the process. Because after character creation, 
the only way you can actually increase your characteristics is with the dedication talent all the way at the bottom of all of the talent trees or enhancing your body with cybernetics. But who wants to do that? The cost of increasing a characteristic is 10 times the purchase rating and experience. And each rating must be purchased sequentially. So that means I can't go from a two to a four for 40 XP. Instead, I have to go from two to three for 30 experience and then from three to four with an additional 40 experience, totaling 70. We may not raise any characteristic above rank five during character creation. In addition to that, we may spend experience to purchase ranks and skills. The cost of that is five times the purchased rank in experience. Each rank must be purchased sequentially. Also, each rank in a non-career skill costs five additional XP. But remember, we cannot raise any skill above rank two during character creation. We can also spend experience to purchase talents within specializations. And the cost of each talent is indicated underneath the talent. Each of the talent trees will function the same way. The first tier will cost five experience. The second tier will cost 10, the third will cost 15, the fourth will cost 20, and the fifth and final will cost 25. We can also use experience to purchase force powers. Initial purchase of a force power costs points listed in force power. Additional power abilities depend on the position within the tree. We'll look at that here in just a second. And last but not least, we may spend experience to purchase new specializations. The cost of this will be 10 times the total number of characters specializations, including new specialization. Non-career specializations cost 10 additional XP. This means if I want to take another specialization within the Guardian career, such as Protector, it will only cost me 20 because this will be my second specialization. However, if I want to purchase a specialization in a different career, such as the Atari Striker under the Seeker career, that will cost an additional 10 experience. And since this will be my second specialization, it will cost 30 experience points. To start with, I'm going to focus on my characteristics. I want to bump up my intellect to three. So I will spend 30 experience to bump that up to three. I also want to bump up my brawn from one to two, so that will cost 20 experience. So already we've used 50 of our 110 experience points. With 60 experience points left, let's take a look at the Ceresu Defender talent tree. I'm going to spend five experience to purchase parry. I'm going to spend five experience to purchase toughened. I'm going to spend five experience to purchase defensive stance and I'm going to use 10 experience to purchase Suresu Technique. Let's take a look at those talents real quick. Perry says that when hit by a melee attack, suffer three strain to reduce damage by two plus ranks in parry, which is one for now, so three. Tuffin says you gain plus two wound threshold, so it's a way of bumping up your HP basically. For defensive stance, once per round, may perform defensive stance maneuver and suffer a number of strain to upgrade difficulty of all incoming melee attacks by an equal number for the next round. Strain suffered this way cannot exceed ranks in defensive stance. So one for now. The Ceresu technique says that when making a check using the lightsaber skill, the character may use intellect instead of brawn. And speaking of the lightsaber skill, I'm going to invest 10 points into bumping up my lightsaber skill from rank one to rank two. And since it is a career skill, that means it will only cost 10 experience points. The Force and Destiny core rulebook has access to 11 force powers. These are battle meditation, bind, enhance, foresee, heal harm, influence, misdirect, move, protect and unleash, seek, and sense. Each of the force powers have a prerequisite. You have to have a force rating, so that means you actually have to be a force user. For example, battle meditation requires a force rating of two. In order to unlock a higher force rating, you'll have to actually unlock it in your talent tree. Each of the powers has an initial cost, and then there are upgrades that you can purchase for that specific power. I'm actually going to be purchasing two force powers for this video.
The first will be Heal Harm. The Force user bolsters his ally with renewed vigor or saps his foe with vital energy. Heal is a light side Force user only. You can spend a Force Pip to heal a number of wounds equal to intellect from an engaged living creature. So for my character, that would be three. The flip side of that is Harm. And you can spend a Force Pip to inflict a number of wounds equal to intellect, ignoring Soak, on an engaged living target. The user does gain one conflict though. That will cost 15 experience points. And with the last 10 experience points that I have, I'm going to purchase Move, which has a requirement of Force Rating 1. The Force user can move small objects via the power of the Force. The user may spend Force Pips to move one object of Silhouette 0 that is within short range up to his maximum range. The default maximum range is short range. By the way, this is probably the one of the most overpowered abilities in the entire game based on the rules as they are. We have four different derived attributes to figure out. We have Wound Threshold, Strain Threshold, Defense, and our Soak value. But I will go ahead and tell you that your defense is most likely going to be zero. That is usually tied to armor. And with as limited money as we have to start off with, it's highly unlikely that you're going to get armor that's going to bump that up. So let's talk about our Wound Threshold. For the Togruta, our Wound Threshold is 10 plus our Brawn, which is 2. And so our Wound Threshold is 12. For our Strain Threshold, it will be 10 plus our Willpower, which is 2. And that total together is going to be 12 as well. Our Soak value is going to be 2 because that is tied to our Brawn. Before we get into our gear, let's talk about motivation. If you want to roll randomly for your motivation, you're going to need a D10. And I've already done this. But there are three different tables to choose from. We have Ambition, Cause, and Faith. I rolled an 8, so that is Faith. And so on the Faith table, I rolled another D10 and rolled a 4, which is the Cosmic Force. And the character understands on some level that everything that happens, has happened, or will happen in the galaxy is part of the Cosmic Force. The Force guides the galaxy and the individuals within it, and things happen for a reason. Let's talk about gear for a moment. During character creation, we have 500 credits to start off with. Of course, you can get more starting credits based on your morality if you chose something along those lines. I only need 500, so I'm going to keep it plain and simple. Unfortunately, a lightsaber is really expensive. Who would have thought? But for the low price of 400 credits, you can get a training lightsaber. And so I'm going to spend 400 credits on a training lightsaber and then 75 credits on the essentials, such as a comlink and some heavy clothing. The heavy clothing, by the way, will add plus one to my soak, so my soak is now three. But the comlink is absolutely essential for talking with, you know, other PCs or NPCs who aren't with you. Go figure. That leaves me with 25 extra credits, and I'm just gonna hold on to that for now. The last step in our character creation process is to determine our group resource. Now, the core rulebook gives us access to three, and those are the Jedi Holocron. If you choose Jedi Holocron, that means you get to either roll or choose the skill that Holocron can enhance. You can start with a starship, or you could start with a mentor. I'm actually going to choose a mentor for now, because that will potentially narratively give me access to other force powers or, you know, guidance in building my own lightsaber. And that's kind of really what I want to go for. That's actually all there is to creating a character. So let's take a look at the character sheet. And so here we have the official character sheet for Force and Destiny. Only two pages, which is absolutely awesome, and it has everything that you need here. We have Lin Yul, a Togruta, who is a guardian of the Suresu Defender. Her force rating is 1, her soak value is 3, her wound threshold is 12, and her strain threshold is 12. No defense, because we're really not wearing any armor. Her brawn is at 2, her agility is at 2, her intellect is at 3, as is her cunning, her willpower is 2, and her presence is at 2. For career skills, we have Cool, Discipline, Resilience, Vigilance, Brawl, Lightsaber, Melee, and Lore, which is a knowledge skill. I put points into Discipline, Perception, and Resilience. I put two points into Vigilance, and I put another point into Lightsaber and Melee. 
We do have a training lightsaber, which uses the lightsaber skill. It does six damage and can only be used at engaged range, but it only does stun damage. For our motivations, we have faith and cosmic force. For morality, we have love and jealousy, and our morality score starts at 50. For credits, I rolled that, and our total is 66. We have heavy clothing, a training lightsaber, and a comm link. For talents and special abilities, we have pack instincts, parry, toughened, defensive stance, and the Suresu technique. For force powers, we have heal and harm, and move. Just the basic force powers, though. And that's it. We're all finished. So feel free to leave a comment down below. Give this video a huge thumbs up to support this series and subscribe if you would like to see more. I will see you guys in the next video.